Hey, how's it going? How's it going, everyone? Do you all have a good weekend? This is the game that we're going to be improving today. What? Or some approximation of it. Oh. So. Hey, how's it going, AD? How's it going, Blake? How's it going, William Dora Gaming? How's it going, Charles? So, who, was there anyone, is there anyone here so far? So as, as normal, we'll give it a few minutes for a few people, more people to arrive. Is there anyone here so far who hasn't done part one? Which is fine, by the way, uh, because I will give you the code for part one and then we can, and then you can uh, make all the changes. Because this is what we should have so far, which is just our blocks. Our blocker can, it falls off of platforms. It can't jump up through platforms. It can't jump in the air, and it can't walk through platforms. This is like the base game, but we're going to be adding more to this. Yep, so um, the idea is that you can just remix uh, part one. I'll put the link into uh, chat. Um, so you guys can just remix it and have all the code. Um, if you've already m followed along with part one and you've got your own version of part one, then just keep going with that because that's what we're going to be adding on to today. Very nice, William. Using a tablet is a good idea. So we've got... Yeah, so I'll show you a little bit of part two. Um, aha, here we go. So, what are a few things that you guys notice about uh, the difference between uh, the game that I was playing earlier, part one and part two? There should be one obvious thing. What else? Let me know in the comments, in the, in the, in the chat. So what happens if I touch the red stuff? Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. You'll notice the level layout's a bit different, but that's fine. Everyone can design their own levels. We fall in the red stuff. Yep, yep, that's what happens. Oh, just about made it. Come on. Uh-oh. Come on. Okay. Uh, another thing about the fox. Do you notice the tail does not catch on the platforms? And the fox itself sort of overlaps a little bit. Oh, made it. Oh, this is new. Uh-oh. Come on. Okay. All right, I think I'm gonna, gonna wait for this one and then up we go, come on. And, okay, nearly, nearly, ah, oh, I wasn't quite fast enough. Okay, come on, come on. Oh no, okay, there we go, made it. All right. Oh, thank you for the reminder with the welcome sign, Blake. Yes, you're right, we've got lava. The other obvious thing is, in our part one of the platformer, our main character is a block. Whereas in this one, it's a fox. And we should talk a little bit about collision. 
because when we do sprites that are like not blocks, they can get stuck. So if you look at this fox sprite, all these little pointing out bits can easily get the stuck, uh, can easily get the fox stuck on certain platforms, which is not really good. If you were to detect collision for the fox, it would like bits of it might get stuck in platforms. Um, you can end up with really uh, bad things where like, because um, our collision doesn't let us move past platforms, but if part of us gets stuck inside the platform, we can't get out either. And that's kind of how our code works. Um, so that's, there's a reason why we started off with making our player a block. Um, and that's because a, a block is a really good shape. There are no sticking out bits, which means it's flat on all four of its sides. There's nothing to get stuck inside um, platforms. There's nothing to get stuck on the edges of platforms. Um, or like the other thing that's really annoying with uh, using like a fox sprite to do collision would be that if even the tiniest tip of your tail touched a tiny bit of lava, you die instantly. And that doesn't actually feel very good to the player. The player who's playing the game will find that they don't, you know, if like one, if like, if like just the, the tiniest tip of your nose touches a lava block and you die, your player will be like, what, really? That's like really, so what you, what you can, so we'll go over this later, but we actually use the block for collision the block to detect if we're standing on a platform, if we're touching lava, that kind of thing. And what we do is superimpose the player skin over the top. Um, and most games will work this way. Uh, you'll notice that when you're playing 3D games, sometimes it's possible for part of your character to get to to get uh, to go through environments, so that when you're trying to go through a door, if let's say you had a cape. You don't want that cape to like hit the door and then prevent you if it's like a really wide cape. If that cape collided with the door, like the, uh, the door, uh, doorway, it would be really frustrating just trying to walk through doors. So collision is actually done through a block and the player skin follows the block around. And that's how the game works. So if I, so the game, so you can see now, we've got this purple block that's actually doing all the collision work for us and the fox is just following it around. And that's how we can get like um, the collision just to work a lot better. Because if, because if, because just imagine uh, if we did this jump like that um, and just got like our nose stuck on the edge of the, of the, of the platform. Like if our nose just got stuck there, that would just be really weird in our game. We want to be able to fall all the way off of the edges of things. All right, so there's a bit of a taster of what we're doing today. So for everyone who hasn't done part one, I'm gonna give you the link to part one in the chat now. So, um, that's the link for the um, uh, code for part one. So you should be able to go to that link that I've posted in chat just now um, and enter it and, I and then you should find a remix button, I'm pretty sure. Let me, have a, let me quickly show you what the remix button will look like. Yeah, see, see this one here? So right in the sort of top right corner, um, there is this kind of green um, remix button. 
So you want to do that on the link that I sent you, that I put into chat, uh, into YouTube chat, okay? Um, so you need to click on that link uh, and it should take you to, through to this project and then you, I don't have it because it's my project, but you guys should have a remix button that you can click on. So everyone, if you don't already have a part one, then do that, then do that now. Um, the other thing as well, um, I want everyone to do right now <laughs> is once you've clicked remix, everyone just, um, click share now. Cause last time around we had a lot of delays between people sharing their projects and me being able to see them. So everyone click your share button right now, um, on the project that you've got. And I'm going to give you a bit of time just to make sure all that's sorted out. Now, if you have any problems, just write into chat um, and I'll help you through them. While everyone's just getting ready, while we're getting our, part, our platformer part one projects ready to go, I'm going to do the normal um, little uh, talk. So, um, welcome ninjas to the Coda Dojo. Um, try to set up with two screens if possible. Um, if possible, can you ha then you can have this YouTube stream on a TV or a tablet or a phone, something that hopefully you can see okay on. A phone, the screen's a bit small, so it's gonna be difficult to see my code. And then if you can be doing your code on something else, like a laptop or a computer, that will work a lot better um, than trying to swap between two, two um, tabs like this, having to go between what I'm doing and what you're doing is a little harder. I mean, you can do it, don't get me wrong. Like, um, if you don't have the ability to have two screens, then just, that's fine. I'll give you some time to like uh, be doing what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, if at all possible, try and try and arrange to have two screens, like an iPad and a laptop, a TV and a laptop, a TV and an iPad, something like that. Okay. Um, oh yeah, thank you very much for the thing about the welcome sign. Uh, remove the welcome sign. Don't remove the stream, Jonathan. Good. All right. So, um, if you spam in chat, I don't know if we've got some new people today, but if you spam in chat, um, I'll time you out for about 30 seconds so you can't write in chat. Um, spamming in chat is when you say the same thing over and over and over and over again. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, so yeah, don't spam. Um, please write into chat. Like, I want you to use it. But if you were to just like type the same thing and just go enter, 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 and just like fill up chat with something, it's really annoying because it means that people are trying to talk to each other to figure out code. I'm trying to see what people are saying and you're just pushing all of their comments back and that's really frustrating. Um, so, uh, triple three, okay. Um, Hey, how's it going, Miles Brisbane? How's it going, Triple Three? Triple Three, welcome to the stream. Welcome to the Coda Dojo. The other thing with chat is just keep it clean, so no swearing, that kind of thing. Um, and use the online version of Scratch if possible, um, because uh, if we run into any problems and your code doesn't work. The only way that I can really help you is if you can share your project and follow me um, on the Scratch website. And then that's an easy way of finding, uh, finding you. So if you can, uh, or if you haven't done already, then in Scratch type in Pale Thorn. You should find some of my games, some of my um, uh, projects. Just click on one of the, don't click on the project name, click underneath the project name, click on Pale Thorn. It should take you through to my um, profile. And then you should have a follow button in the top right corner. I don't have it because I can't follow myself. Um, but if you click on that, then I should be able to easily find you um, here um, when you're like, Jonathan, my code's not working. Can you have a look at it? Then I can be like, yeah, sure. What's your, um, what's your name? And then I'll click you up. Speaking of which, if you need help with your project, you have to share your project and you have to comment, it isn't working, my scratch name is. 
and then I'll be able to because I, I can't remember everyone's scratch name on the top off the top of my head. So because people's YouTube names are different from their scratch names, they'll be like, it's not working. And I'll be like, well, what's your scratch name? I can't remember it. <laughs> so if you say my scratch, so if my, uh, it's not working, my scratch name is Pale Thorn, I'll be like, OK, great. No problems. And I'll look you up. OK, um, so um, that's all good. Um, and if I'm helping fix one person's project, follow along because um, you might see what I miss and you can type into chat going, Jonathan, this is the problem. This is why it's not working. And you can help fix it for me. Or it might help me fix, it might help you fix yours if you see what we're doing to fix someone else's project. Okay, so that's pretty much everything. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a start so I hope everyone's gotten platformer part one sorted. I'm just going to post it one more time. Just gonna double check, is that the right one? Make sure you click, if you, if you don't already have your own version, um, then click remix on this, because this is what we're starting with. Okay, um, now is Kitty Comics here? If Kitty Comics is here, type into chat because I have, uh, because Kitty Comics was trying to get some help with their project last time, so on Thursday, but I couldn't find their Scratch account because um, I think it was private um, and I figured out the problem. I've left a comment. Hello, kitten. Um, I've left, I've left, um, I've left a, a comment on their Scratch project that should give them the solution, but if they're in stream now, um, then we can do that at the end as well. Um, or I can even show you now. Um, not actually, if we had a bit more time, I'd go through it with you guys and we'd solve this problem together. But um, we've already used up a bit of our, we've already used up all of our intro time and some more. So I think it's time to get ready to code. So everyone's ready to code some platformer games? Got some Mario fans, some Sonic fans? You can make your own platformer. All right, so. I'll take this and put it away for now. Um, this is what I'm gonna start off here. I'll put this away as well. Don't need that. And I'll put these over here, my notes. Okay, so everyone, you should have um, your, your platformer game um, or, or else platformer part one remixed, um, ready to go. Um, let's just very quickly go through some of this code. Down we go, kitten. Um, and let's, let's, Sorry, I'm just reading the chat at the moment. The report for Little Jimmy failed. Oh, look, don't don't worry about reporting projects unless they're like really serious. I'm I'm not I'm not bothered by by that. Don't worry about it. Um. So, yes. Okay, so we're good to go. So let's go through some of this code, shall we? We should only have two um, sprites. One is the player. And one is the platforms. Um, now, you can also change the backdrop to anything that you like, but this is very important. Do not change the player sprite, okay? I'm gonna say that again. Do not change the player sprite. So we're going to put a skin on the player, but we're not gonna change the player sprite. It has to remain a block. It has to remain um, a rectangle or square. Okay, all right. Um, so, to go through some of this code, let's um, let's 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 look through it. We've only got three blocks. Let's go through the simplest one first. We've got this one here. When I receive restart, what does this code do? So. This is when I receive a broadcast. So something else, somewhere else in our code will broadcast a message. And then when we receive that broadcast, that message, we do something. And what is this? What does it do? 
So write your answers in chat. I'm going to tell you now. What it does is it sends the player back to exactly about here. Literally, for me, for th these coordinates, these coordinates minus 219 and minus 127 are right here. Now, I should also ask, has anyone not used Scratch before? If anyone has not used Scratch before, um, then... Um, if you, and, and if anyone gets a little bit, finds this one a little bit hard because we're doing a part two, don't worry. Tune in tomorrow at 3.30 because we're going to be doing Flappy Bird from, from scratch, from part one, okay? So, um, when I receive restart, it makes this block go to here. So that's um, going to happen Let's see. Um, and we need to figure out where does the broadcast happen to um, make that, to, 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 to trigger the restart. We'll come back to that. So now we have a block of code underneath where it says when key, when space key pressed. So this piece of code I won't go into, into too much detail, but basically this is the code that does our jump. Whenever we press space, we jump in the air. And what it does is it asks, it first asks if a variable called can jump is yes. Now this variable basically prevents us, and you, can, you should see as we jump, there's a little variable change from can jump yes to can jump no. This is basically a way of stopping our player from being able to jump in midair. They have to be standing on a platform, okay? Um, the other thing that it does is it makes the player go up. The other thing that it does is it double checks if it hits its head on something. And if it does, it stops the script. It makes the player fall again. So that's what this script does, okay? Now this script has a fair bit in it. We've got some stuff just at the beginning. We set the level to one. We make the player go to their starting position. We set the variable can jump to yes, because uh, you always need to, almost all of your variables, you need to start them off at a certain value. Um, and then we've got a few things that happen. We have a forever loop that, um, and this, so this, this uh, everything happening in this forever loop is happening over and over and over and over and over again, probably a bunch of times every second. The first thing it does is it makes our player fall. It makes our player go down by an amount. Then it asks the question, if touching platforms, then set can jump to yes, because we want to be able to jump if we're, touch, if we're standing on a platform, and then change y by 7. So... Changing y by minus 7 makes our player go down. Changing our y by 7 reverses that, so, our, so we're not falling through the platforms, okay? So now we have uh, two bits of code that are very similar. They're basically um, ways of our... They're basically the controls right and left. So if key right arrow pressed, change x by 7, which makes our character go right. But if you touch a platform, then change x by minus 7, so you reverse that. You go back to where you started. And you don't see this happen because it happens so fast. It looks like the player's never moved, but this is what prevents our player from being able to slide through walls. And then we have the whole thing, but in reverse for left arrow, okay? Then after that, we have one final piece of code, and that's if x position is more than 239, change level by one. This is what makes our player broadcast restart and go back to the beginning of the level. Um, and then now, now what we'll do, um, because remember that broadcast restart, that's what makes the player go back to their starting position. Um, this x position more than 239 is basically has our player gotten to the edge of this screen here? Has it gotten, has our player gotten all the way to the right? And if so, send them back to their starting position and increase a variable called level by one. Now, last thing that we need to figure out is what does level, changing the level by one do? Well, 
If we go across to our platform sprite, we have um, another uh, two blocks, uh, two bits of code here. One that just says, when the game starts, switch your costume to one. And then when I receive restart, switch costume to whatever level is. So if we look at costumes, we should have a couple of costumes here and they're all named one, two, three, four, and they're all in correct order, one, two, three, four. And that's how you make additional levels. Each time you get to the end, you can go back. All right, so first things first, let's make a skin for our player character. That, that explanation took a bit longer than I expected, but it's been a week since we did this, so I wanted to go over some of this, okay? So hopefully you're all with me. Um, everyone at the same time, I want us all to make a new sprite. Uh, to do that, you go to the bottom right corner of the screen, you click on choose a sprite, and your character can be anything that you like. It should be about the same shape as your block, uh, just for like gameplay reasons, but it can be anything that you like. I'm going to choose the fox again, because I quite like the fox. OK. So once, and then we're going to rename this sprite player skin. Uh, to rename a sprite, you just click on the middle right um, of the screen where it says sprite. Um, and then with some text, and you should be able to rename it there, player skin. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to put some code that makes this sprite follow the block around. Um, so let's go across to the left side to events, the yellowy category on the left. We want to get when green flag clicked want this to happen uh, at the beginning of the level and continue to happen forever. So we need a forever block. You might be able to get it. You might be able to see it. If not, then go to, across to the orangey category control. Look for forever. It should have a little gap in it. And we then need to go to motion, the dark blue category in the top left corner. And we want to get this go to random position. Now, we're not going to make that go to random position, but we do need this block and put this inside the forever. We need to click on the white triangle next to go to random position. And we need to click on, we want them to go to, well, actually, what do we want them to go to? What do we want the player skin to go to at all times and be on top of? Write your answers in chat. I hope you got your answers in because the answer is the player. So now we should have this skin following around our block. Now we've got two problems. One, the skin is too big. And two, the skin is not changing direction. So let's fix those things first, shall we? Let's get, uh, we can change the size nice and easy, right? So in the, in the, just above where you've got your three sprites, just if you see my, where my mouse is, we can change the size. So change, so it should be, the size should be a hundred. Let's change that to a number that makes more sense. I think 40 isn't bad. I could make it a bit smaller. What I kind of like Okay. So what we can do now Uh, is uh, 
I might change the size of... So now the other thing that you can do is if you want to, you can change the size and positioning of your player block if you want, um, but you don't have to. So we'll leave that for now. So currently it looks a bit weird because the fox is going to be able to kind of push a fair amount of its body into the wall, but I don't really care about that right now, so I'm not too bothered. I'm just going to leave that for now. We could fix that if we wanted to, but we'll come back to that later maybe. Um, and if you've chosen a different sprite, a more squarish sprite, then it will look better for you anyway. Ah, Miles Brisbane. All right, so um, what you need to do um, is... Have you clicked on the link? Uh, have you used Scratch before, Miles, for one thing? Um, for another thing, um, have you clicked on the link? I'll just link again. And then you need to click on Remix. And if you don't understand the code, then don't worry about it. I'm going to lead you through all of the changes that we're making. Um, just follow along with everything that we do. And if you, if you find this one hard, don't worry. Tomorrow we're doing a really easy one. We're making Flappy Bird. So, um, yeah, just, just hold tight for today's session and then tune in tomorrow at 3.30 and we're going to have a, a brand new um, session for how to make Flappy Bird in Scratch, okay? All right. Um, so um, what we need to do now... Um, we should have made this new sprite by clicking on the little cat face in the bottom right corner, just where I'm wiggling my mouse, and then choosing something um, that you want. And then what we need to do is we go into the code for this sprite, um, and we drag out uh, these codes that you should see on my screen. We need to go to events to get the when green flag clicked, we need to go to control to get forever, and we need to get go to random position, put it inside the forever, and then change that to um, player. And you just drag the codes out and you connect them up like Legos, Miles. Okay, that's how it works. If you get stuck, don't stress, just follow along as best you can. Um, at, the, at the end um, of the session, around about 4.30, I'll go through and I'll help everyone whose code's not working out. And next and tomorrow, we're going to be doing a nice, easy one. So tune in for that one. It should be really good. OK. Um, so, oh, yes, one more thing, Miles. If you are on the iPad, you should go to the Scratch website because you need to not use the Scratch app the Scratch website is what you need to do. So just go to Google, just open up like Safari if you're on an iPad, type in Scratch, and um, uh, yeah, try and do it that way, okay? If you get stuck, tune in tomorrow, Miles. It's, fi it's fine, we're gonna be doing Flappy Bird then. Okay, so um, what we need to do now is We've got our, we've got our um, fox skin attached to our player block. Let's get it changing directions. So what we need to do is we need to go across to the left category, uh, left side of the screen, and go to the category, uh, probably, yeah, when, uh, probably events. So the yellowy category on the left, events. We need to get when space key pressed. Drag that out. Actually, yeah, let's see if this works. Actually, no, it's not going to work. I've just realized there's a problem with it. All right, take that when space key pressed and throw it out. We don't need it. What we're going to do instead is we're going to get an if statement. So go down to the orangey category on the left, control, and get the block labeled if then. Get that block, drag it out, and put it right underneath where it says go to player. Um, and then what you need to do is you need to um, g 
go to sensing, the light blue category on the left. Um, and we need to get key um, space pressed. Um, So, Miles, you shouldn't need to sign in. You don't need to sign in. Um, you should just be able to go to the Scratch website and just do everything that we're doing on iPad. The old versions of Scratch didn't work on iPad, but the new versions of Scratch do, do work on iPad, okay? Um, as far as I'm aware. Um, so, what we need to do then is we need to go to... We need to change. We need to change where it says key space pressed to left arrow pressed. Um, if you're struggling, Miles, because I've got to, I've got to like, I've got to keep going with the lesson because um, we're already, we're already half an hour in. Um, so if you're, if you're really struggling, Miles, um, then yeah. Then, then maybe tomorrow would be like a better, better fit. Um, if you if you can't get to the remix point, I've, I'm really sorry. We've got to just keep got to keep the lesson going. Um, all right. If key left arrow pressed, then we need to change the direction that the fox is looking in. So, to do that, we need to go to the motion um, category in the top left. Um, and we need to get point in direction. So point in direction, and one of my favorite things about point in direction is you can click on the 90. You could put a number in, but it gives us this really handy little wheel where we can just point it in various directions. So if key left arrow pressed, we need to be pointing our player skin in the left direction. So just grab this little pointy wheel thing and point it left. Um, and then what we need to do is uh, do copy this code. So right click on where it says if, We need to click normal click on duplicate and then put this right underneath the other if. Make sure it's not stuck inside the if, but it's right underneath. I have a feeling, Miles, if you don't have a move block, then you're using the app. You, this is not using the app. This is using the web version, um, just like RuneWiz said. Um, so you need to go into Safari, you need to type in Scratch to do a search for Scratch, and you need to get to that version of Scratch, okay? You don't need to sign in, um, and that's what we're using today. Um, and as I said, um, if, you, if, if, you get a, if, 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 if today's session's a bit tricky for you, um, then don't worry, tomorrow's session's gonna be a lot of fun, it's gonna be a lot easier. Um, okay, so then what we need to do is we need to change the uh, second if statement to say if key right arrow pressed. We need to click on the number in point in direction and point it back to right. Now let's test it. Now something's going to go wrong. What do you think is going to go wrong? Write your answers in chat. Try and get your answers in because I'm going to show you. Uh, do you see what's up there? My poor fox is going upside down. How do we fix this? Well, I shall tell you. Nice and simple. There's actually a few ways of, of fixing this, but I'm gonna show you uh, my favorite version, which is with code. We need to go, we, need, we should still be in motion. Scroll down until you see set rotation style. 
get that and put it right above the forever. And we want to set rotation style. We have three options. We want to set it to left, right. Let's see what that does. Okay, so we've got right, we've got left, and that's much better now. The fox is looking left and looking right. In your case, it might, it's probably something else. You've probably chosen a different, a different character for your skin. All right. Um, so now we've got a skin working. The problem is, is the, block, the block is still there. So let's fix that, shall we? Um, so what we need to do now, here's a problem. If we hide the block, the block will no longer be able to detect platforms because it's hidden. Because hiding not only makes it so that the player can't see it, but now the game can't see it anymore either. Now, there is a way of hiding something from the player, but not the game. And to do that, we're gonna use a graphical effect. So what we need to do is we need to go across to the player sprite. <laughs> I know RuneWiz, right? Rotation style is now a code block. So you can actually change the rotation style partway through. That was actually really awesome, moving from scratch two to scratch three. I really enjoyed that. Um, so then what we need to do is we need to go to looks. Um, we need to get change. What's gonna, it's going to say, the block's going to say change color effect or set color effect to zero. That's the block that we need. We're going to change some things in it, though. So grab um, the code set color effect to zero. Grab that and put it underneath when green flag clicked. Remember, this is in your player sprite. Yes, you've got it in one really Doro gaming. We are going to set, so for everyone else, so once we have this here, set color effect to zero, right underneath when green flag clicked, we're gonna change color to ghost by clicking on the little white triangle. And we're gonna set the effect to 100%, so which means the block will go completely transparent but the game will still be able to detect it. So now we should have a nice sprite with no block, but it's still colliding with these platforms really neatly. It's not getting its nose stuck on platforms. It's not getting its feet stuck in platforms or its tail. This is really, really useful to do it this way. I know it seems like a lot of effort to do it this way, but it's really useful if you want to make a good platformer. And all modern games have what's called a hitbox, uh, where in the code there will be a very simple shape, usually a box or a sphere, or, well, not a sphere, actually, usually a box or, like, um, a cone sometimes, but just a shape that d does all the collision for the player um, so that if you have a character with, like, arms and bits of, like, you know, weapons coming off of them and like a cloak and such, none of those bits get stuck in the environment when it's detecting things like, should I be falling, should I be able to walk through this wall and that kind of thing. All right, so that's good. That should be sorted. How's everyone going? Uh, everyone still, still on board? What we're going to do is we're going to add some lava. Um, so to do that, we're actually going to, yeah, we're going to copy the platforms um, sprite. So we're going to click on platforms just on the right side, just underneath where our game window is. We're going to right click on it, which is this one here. And we're going to normal click on duplicate. 
So it should have made us something called platforms2. It's got the code, it's got the um, uh, costumes. We're going to rename this to lava. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do, let's do some, let's do some art. So let's go into costumes and let's get, let's delete uh, most of these costumes. So um, what we're going to do now, now this is a bit, this is a bit finicky. And this is why I think some people do color detection instead of sprite detection for their games. Um, but we need to create a um, empty sprite. So go across to the left, the bottom left corner, click on paint, um, delete your last remaining costume. So we've just, we should only have one empty costume now. Okay, and we're gonna call that first costume one. Okay, and then figure out where do you want your first lava to be. So I'm just going to paint a new costume and call this two. I'm gonna paint a new costume and call this three. And so I've got three empty costumes now, one, two, and three. And let's have a look at platforms. Now what you can do is you can click on the platform sprite and then you can, in costumes, select which, plat which um, costume you want to be looking at. Um, so the first, um, the first costume that I'm going to do some lava in is costume three um, of my platforms. So I'm going to go back to lava. I'm going to change. I'm going to do another block like we did, but I'm going to make it red. And I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to move it around. Now, I know this is a bit finicky, but what this allows us to do by having platforms and lava in separate sprites is that currently we've got very simple graphics, but we could have very complex graphics if we wanted. We could import Mario sprites into platforms, and as long as they were nice and straight lines, straight edges, um, the... Um, the player would collide with them um, really nicely. It wouldn't be like, oh, I need it all to be this one color. Um, so we could do some really nice graphical effects to some of our platforms. And what we can also do by keeping it not color detection, by keeping it as sprite detection, is we can add enemies like Goombas or Robotnik, boss battles, that kind of thing, um, into the game and our, and our player will collide with those. So, what you should have now is you should have platforms as a sprite with multiple costumes, each of them with uh, the name as just one, two, three, four, that kind of thing, just a name that's just a number, and that's the level that we're on. And then, in lava, I want you to start adding in where you want the lava to be. So, oh, this is a good idea. So, and the other thing that you can do is you can just duplicate for, um, and then also grab these blocks and change them like this. Very quickly, you can add new levels this way. And I'm gonna do something kind of a bit cute. I'm going to, Do this. Now, one thing that I would say is just make sure there's no empty ground um, and also make sure that if you have lava, probably a good, well, actually, no. I, I was going to say something, but honestly, it's probably fine. Ah. One more thing you should do. <laughs> um, you should go to lava. This might mess stuff up for you, but that's okay. We can just move it. 
and I want you to set lava to be x equals zero and y equals zero. You do that by going to the middle right of the screen and you should have something that says x and something that says y. That's probably gonna throw off your placement a little bit. So I'm gonna give you some time to fix that. That seems good. Um, where do you need to fit? You need to fit in there. That seems good. Cool. And let's see if this is possible. So Oh, okay, now can I get across without touching the lava? I can, that's cool. Now, we haven't coded our lava to kill us yet. So let's do that now. Um, let's go to our player sprite give you a bit of time just in case you're doing some art. Um, but when you're ready, go across the player sprite. And I want you to, we're gonna add in another line of code. Now one thing that's probably a good idea, if you did last Thursday's tutorial, do you remember how we took our code and we put it into my blocks to make it easier to figure out which um, like what all this code does, easier for us to remember what all the code does. I look at it and I remember, but you guys might look at it and go, oh man, what does that bit do again? Um, that could be a good idea um, to do uh, if you remember how we did that last time. But for now, let's not make it too complicated. Um, let's add in a new line of code. Um, and this should be nice and simple actually. So just at the very end, in fact, should it be at the very end? Where should it go exactly? Yeah, it should go at the very end. Nice and simple. We need to put in an if statement. So do you remember where to get if statements from? We get them from control. Um, so that's the orangey category on the left. We get an if statement. We And let's put it all the way um, at the very bottom of our when green flag clicked um, section of code, which is quite long, but it starts with when green flag clicked in the player sprite. Scroll all the way to the bottom. We need to put a brand new if statement right underneath and we need to make sure it doesn't get stuck in another, another if statement. It should be right on the bottom just before the forever loop ends. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do some collision to our lava. Nice and simple. Um, so we're going to get a sensing block called touching. We're going to change touching mouse pointer to touching lava. Click on that little white triangle to change that. And what we need to do is we've already got a really useful way of sending our player back to the starting position. If you remember at the beginning when I went through, what do we do? What do we do to send our player all the way to the beginning of the level? We need to, one line, that's all we need. We need to broadcast restart. So you go to events, the yellowy category on the left. You get broadcast. Make sure it says broadcast restart. And then let's test it. You okay, Blake? You running into any problems? Anyone else? Everyone else? Uh, anyone else got some, got some got some confusions? Let's see if I can fall in this lava and yeah, see it resets me. Yeah, there we go. So now I've got to be nice and careful. Uh-oh, uh come on. 
I fluked this the first time. Oh, I might have made this too hard. What if I do it like, oh no. Oh yeah, it's too hard. All right, what I need to do then is I need to change the level. I did it, I did it at least once. But that's nice and easy. You should always test your levels. So now the solution should be like this. Let's see if that works any better. This needs to be a little bit easier to get to. There we go. If you are playing your game and you see any of your blocks wiggle around, it's probably because you've still got them selected on the drawing tool, which allows you to move them around. So make sure that you click somewhere in the checkerboard background. Alrighty, so if anyone's having problems, because we're getting to that point now where we can start going through some of our code. Uh oh. Then what I need you to do is I need you to publish it on Scratch, which you should have already done at the beginning. Um, I need you to click share and I need you to write into chat. Um, I'm having some problems. Um, my Scratch name is. I'm gonna go back to the lava code for Richard. Welcome Richard, by the way. So the lava code should actually be the same. Oh, the lava code for the player, right. So what you need to do is there should only, it should only be, you just need to add in this at the very end. It just needs to be this much. So if touching lava, then broadcast restart. And that needs to be in the forever loop of your player. So that needs to be in the player. The code that's in the lava should be the same code that's in your platforms. It just basically changes the lava, the lava's costume to whatever the level is. All right, um, AD, you gotta remind me what your scratch name is. Is it Yo-Yo Cakes? Is that you? Right, Yo-Yo Cake, maybe. Okay, so what you need to make sure that you do Ah, so yo yo cake. Have a look at your um code in the lava. Do you see when green flag clicked, switch costume to it needs to be to one. When green flag clicked, switch costume to one, not when green flag clicked, switch costume to two. That should fix it. And then just make sure that your costumes are all correctly named. So you've got your platforms are all correctly named, your, um, your, your platform costumes and your lava costumes are all correctly named. Okay, so, oh, the lava sprites, um, code Richard should be exactly the same as the platform sprite code. So it should just be just these here. When the green flag clicked, switch costume to one. When I receive restart, switch costume to level. Same thing in the lava sprite. When the green flag clicked, switch costume to one. When I receive restart, switch costume to level. All righty, uh, so let's have a look at Blake's project. So everyone else, while I'm doing this, now's the time to get super creative because I wanna play your games 
So I want you to start designing me some games that can be beaten. <laughs> I won't I won't hold it against you if you make me a few troll levels, actually. Make me a troll level at the end, why not? But uh, try and design some levels for me to play. Because what I'm going to do, because um, after we've finished fixing everyone's codes, I'm going to play everyone's games. I'm looking forward to it. All righty. So... Uh, let's have a look-see. We're going to go to... Now, is it Darpy Darp? No, no, it's Infamous. Nine, nine Infamous. We want to go to no, zero, nine Infamous. Okay. Uh, now, did you share your project at the beginning? Like I asked you to. Have you all... Mm, okay. Oh, wait, platformer? Okay, yep, cool. So, hardly jumps. So, I think it's getting stuck. So, let's illustrate this. Let's figure out how big your, let's take out the set ghost effect. Yeah, look, so you're getting stuck on that edge. You should be able to see this. So you're saying you've got hardly any jump. It's not that, it's that you're getting stuck. It's your level design. So you're getting stuck on this ledge here. What you need to do is you need to make sure that you're giving enough room for your character to move around. If I were to do that, so if I just move um, the first thing out of the way, there we go, isn't that much better? All right, give that a try, Infamous, okay? Okay. So yeah, you're just boxing your, your character in um, but if you do what I did, which was just basically move this ledge to the left, that should fix it. All right, so that's all good. So Yo-Yo Cakes is sorted. Is anyone else having problems? Um, so, um, anyone else got any, having any issues? Does everyone else's code is working? Everyone make sure you're building some extra levels for some games that I want to play. Yeah, I'd like to do part part three, William. Um, we've got to be careful not to do too many extra parts of things because it's really hard for people like Miles, who it's his first time today. And so it's like, this was a baptism of fire for you, Miles. So sorry about that. You came in at a, <laughs> at a point that was like, oh, we're gonna do this part two. Um, but tune in tomorrow, Miles. Um, I'd really like to like to see you tomorrow at 3.30 because we're going to be making Flappy Bird and I'll make sure that we go through the very beginning um, of how to use Scratch, okay? Um, and it should be a lot of fun making that one, okay? Um, so, but yeah, William, I would love to do a part three of this one um, because we haven't done the boss battle yet. We've done the lava. We've got the lava working, but we haven't got the boss battle working. How's everyone going with all their level design? I'll show you. Okay, so Richard, what you need to pick up the lava is you need to go to the player code. In the player code, um, you should have a long block of code called, uh, that starts with when green flag clicked, okay? Um, actually, I might be able to look you up, Richard. Uh, so, let's have a quick look. Oh, wait, one second. What am I doing? I don't want to sign out. Uh, my stuff. Okay, uh, now I think I've followed you. 
No, no, that's the wrong thing. Profile. Oh, no. Um, was it... What, what was your scratch name, Richard? Was it Richard Van Prock? I remember you being on Scratch. I remember looking at your code before. Um, so, but, but yeah, to do the code, what you need, ah, so what you need, Richard, is you need a, you need the purple line right here. Uh, so right underneath, when the green flag clicked, set ghost effect to 100. That's if you already have like a, a skin following you around. So in my case, it's this fox that's following around the block. Um, if you don't have that, then don't worry about setting the ghost effect to 100. Just watch the um, YouTube um, uh, video back uh, once we're done, and it'll take you through how to do the uh, player skin. And then what you need at the very end, Richard, is you need the, this line here. You need inside the forever loop, so it's, uh, yeah, so you've got forever, and at the very bottom, you need if, and it needs to be um, right at the very end of the forever loop and not stuck inside one of the if other if statements. It needs to be right, in, um, right at the very bottom, just before the end of the forever. You need if, then you need to go to sensing. You need touching mouse pointer, but we're going to change that to touching lava, and then you need to broadcast restart. So, and that should take your player back to the beginning of the level every time you touch the lava. Jolly fun. Platformer, okay. So I think this is the latest one. Oh yeah, we've got some lava here. Yeah. Ah, now there's one thing, Richard. Um, if I hide this. So this is the thing. You might need, actually, yeah, this is what I meant to say before. You might need, because you're, uh, you might need your lava just to be a little bit, um, A little bit more sticky outy um, than the than the than the platforms, so you just might need to do like literally this because your your um, character, your block, it slightly hovers above the ground. So yeah, you might. And there is a way of fixing that, but it would require a lot more complex code. The code that I've given you has a few drawbacks. One of them is that the player kind of hovers off of platforms. Um, but um, I think it's worth it because the code's a lot simpler to learn. Uh, we've, I know it doesn't seem super simple, but if you ever want to look up one of the other platformers that do this perfectly with blocks that like perfectly go up to... Um, uh, up to up to platforms, um, then go for it, and you'll see that the code is a lot more involved to make them not hover on top of platforms. If that makes sense. So yeah, you might just need to stick your you might need to just change your level design so that the lava is stuck out um, a little bit more, because uh, the player block will always hover slightly above. Um, or what you could do is you could remove some of the platforms and put lava in their place so that your character will fall off the platform and into the lava. So that's my solution for you, Richard. Hopefully that's, um, yeah. Just, yeah, just be careful with changing the, um, uh, the amount that your character falls by. Um, so if you've changed the amount that your character falls by, just make sure it's always mirrored by the amount that your character goes up by as well. Um, I just noticed in chat, Richard, you said that you changed Y 
made Y set five, and I'm not sure what you're referring to, but if you're referring to changing your full speed, which is right here, then just make sure that the, the speed at which your character goes back up again is also the same. Otherwise, you might end up getting stuck in um, platforms um, by jumping up into them. You might get your character stuck in them, and then you can't fall out of them because you're stuck inside them. Okay? Uh, all right, so... Darpy Darp, I am so ready. I am ready. We've got some. We've got some. We've actually got time to play some games this time. So let's play Darpy Darp's game. Has anyone else added a bunch of levels? I'm. I'd like to try and have a go at a bunch of different people's games. If you've got some new levels, I am super psyched. I am ready to go. All right, Darpy Darp. Um, profile. Let's look up Darpy Darp. Here you are. Alrighty, let's play this. Okay. I'm really interested to see if anyone just completely like trolls me with like a, just an, un, an unwinnable level. Uh oh, well, this is not a good start. Come on. <laughs> I've got to be really careful about not landing on. Okay, made it. Ah, uh, yes. Now, you see what Darby Darp's able to do. You can have platforms that are all different colors because we're not detecting color for collision. We're detecting sprites for collision. Yep, cool. Oh, no. Okay, that, you know, that's, that's fine. We can go around this way. All right, good. Uh-oh. Okay, this isn't looking good. All right. Oh, no. Okay, come on. Up here. Up here. And then across. Don't go here. Oh, and we can't jump as well. We're stuck. Is that pi? That number is pi? Very cool, Darpy Darp. I like it. I like it a lot. Now, oh yes, um, that is, okay, so who, so Blake, uh, infamous zero nine, let's have a go of yours, because um, you had a bunch of levels. I am, I am, I am ready to go. I always click on the wrong thing. All right, infamous, okay. Let's have a look-see, view all, platformer, oh no, that doesn't look good. <laughs> All right, let's see how far I can get everyone. Start. Okay, cool. Yep, good, good. Huh. All right, it's going to be really interesting trying to figure out where my collision is. Okay, we don't want to... Oh, no. Okay, so we've got to... Gotta... Oh, is there, a, is there a way of doing this? Oh, I think I know. All right, what I need to do... What, okay, what I think I need to do is I need to slightly fall off and then jump. Yeah, that's the way. So, so our system does allow for slightly falling off of something. Oof. Oh, oh, that's mean. Oh, that's so mean. We've got to try and get our sharp. We've got to try and get our block. Okay. I wonder if we can just get straight over that. I don't think we can. Yeah, we got it. Okay, made it. Uh... Uh, am I am I being trolled here? Am I being trolled? <laughs> okay, I'm definitely being trolled. Being trolled. <laughs> uh, there were there were a bunch of levels actually I saw in here. Oh yeah, you're going all the way up to eight. That's awesome. Lava. Oh, there's a bunch more. Is that meant to happen? Ah, uh, yes. Um, just be careful, um, Blake, because your platform sprite and your lava sprite are not set to x equals zero and y equals zero, which means it's going to be really hard for you to draw them, draw things for them, uh, because 
they're not set to be centered on the middle. Um, I know it's you've already done a bunch of work on this and it's probably gonna like mess up a bunch of stuff if you change it to um, X equals zero and Y equals zero, but it's it might be worth just doing and then fixing the levels by moving everything around until it's all fixed again. Because otherwise, like the fact that this lava, can, can you see guys? I don't know if you can see this. When I'm clicking, when I click on a sprite, it highlights ha where the sprite is, right? So when I click on the, the player skin, it highlights the entirety of the shark sprite. When I click on the, in the entirety of the player sprite, when I click on the player sprite, it, it highlights the entirety of the player sprite. You can see it coming up in this blue box in the top right corner, right? When I do platforms, you can see that most of it is on screen, but look at this white bit at the top there, which that's, that's like slightly off. Um, and if I click lava, that's quite off the screen. So all the drawing that you need to do to then is like when you're drawing onto this screen, it's not the, it doesn't match up if your X and your Y are wrong over here on where the sprite's located. If you put X equals zero and Y equals zero, everything will be nicely centered, which means you, when you draw on like the left side on the drawing area, everything will correspond correctly to what it looks like on the right. Okay. Okay, so. Um, all right, that is awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Um, if you, so what I'd like you, so what, what I'd like you to do is build a bunch more levels um, and then comment your project into the YouTube comment for this uh, video. And then I will be able to go through and play your games. Um, Cause I'd really like to see what additional levels you want to add into the game. Um, so do that. Um, and as always, leave a comment on the YouTube video if you want to uh, suggest for what um, what tutorials you'd like me to do next. I check the YouTube comments every day, um, so I will see your comment and I will respond to it. Um, you can add your project to the Futures Lab Studio. Um, as always, I think I've added a few more curators before the stream today. A few more people um, asked to be curators. I've added you now. Um, and yeah, just think of some stuff to improve the game as well. Uh, see if you can have a play with the code and uh, test it. Each time you change the code, test it immediately to see if it works. And if it doesn't, then change it back. Don't make like three changes and then test the code and realize it's broken, but you don't know where because <laughs> you made three different changes. Um, so yeah, change the code, test it, um, and see if you can add some stuff from maybe some other games. Maybe you can add some like uh, enemies that we need to escape. Um, the next stream tomorrow is Flappy Bird. Um, um, and um, we do these streams every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Sorry, I was just reading chat. Blake, you've asked if I can check out your help, help milk game. Um, I'll have a look at that, and I'll leave a comment. Um, uh, I won't do it live on stream, because we, we, we need to pack this up. I've run out of time, as always. Um, but... Until then, I hope, I hope I see you guys tomorrow for a Flappy Bird. Um, and on Thursday, we're making music using Scratch. So that should be a lot of fun as well. Something a bit different, a little less gamified. Um, but uh, yeah, until I see you guys next time, remember to stay awesome. Uh, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. So we'll see you next time, ninjas.